Good Wednesday, friends. I hope and pray that you are all doing well. So, last week during my midweek message, I had an unfortunate backdrop of a wreath from my kitchen and hung over my head like a halo. I had so many comments about it that people were offended, people were distracted or whatever, that I decided I was going to beat the system and wear my own intentional hat so that it would not offend anybody today. So, hopefully this will work. I know my family probably will disagree, but I'm going to wear this and see how it goes. Now, in my conversations with many of our church members over the last week, it seems that most of you are weathering the storm pretty well. I know it's difficult to remain inside and not spend time with your loved ones, or heck, spend time even with people you don't like, but we know that this too will pass. For our midweek message, I'd like to share a video with you and hope that it gets you thinking about things maybe in a different way. Watch this video. Nobody tells stories about sunny days when the weather was perfect and the wind was just right. Not good stories, anyway. In the stories we love, the skies grow dark, the waves leap high, sharks circle. We're never quite sure how the hero will survive. So why is it that when the dark days come our way, we worry that the story has gone wrong? Why do we declare that God is good when the sun shines and then resist Him just when we need Him most? If He's already written our perfect and ending, is the writer trustworthy to get the middle right, to surprise us with his love one more time. Faith begins when we can't imagine what the next chapter holds. Faith begins when we can't imagine what the next chapter holds. I really like that. It's very similar to the book of Hebrews' definition of faith in chapter 11, verse 1. Faith is the assurance of what we hope for, the proof of what we don't see. Today, it's hard to see our way out of a time of isolation. But I think about all those times in scriptures when the Israelites felt like they were in isolation. There were those times when they had been captured, taken to live in new lands. Elders were killed generations past before they even heard a word from God. It felt like they were completely alone. But through faith, we see the shining sun through the storm clouds. We pay attention to the good parts of our lives in the midst of the difficult times. So in an effort to do so, I wonder if you'd be willing to send me some pictures. You can use my email at revdad27 at gmail.com or my cell phone. Send me a text. Send me a picture of one of those bright spots in your day. Uh, maybe it's the kids playing or it's a phone call from a friend or neighbor. Maybe it's even a new plant that's popping through in your garden. Whatever the good story is, that God sighting, take a picture of it, send it in to me. We all need to share the goodness that God is providing in these days. Okay, now, so for a few announcements about what's going on with our church. The session met last week and they decided that our building will remain closed through the end of April in an effort to stave off the spread of the coronavirus. Now, this means that there will not be any in-person worship at the building. There's no meetings, no outside groups at the church. Only a couple staff members will be coming in and out of the building very sporadically. I'll be doing most of my work from home, but occasionally coming here into the office. And I know that this decision isn't incredibly good news. 
but it's important that we care for the most vulnerable in our community. It also means that Good Friday and Easter services will have to be online. It's going to be different for sure, but we will be okay. In an effort to try to keep people connected, lots of other things are being put in place. Sarah is offering multiple things for kids, and uh, Trisha is offering some opportunities for our youth to connect as well. I know Sarah is looking uh, for some items from your homes for, for the children. If they could take a picture of an item from your house, send it into her. She's going to craft a children's message based off that item right on the spot when we have our worship service. The kids have also been uh, given a Bible reading challenge to read a chapter a day through the book of John. In fact, if any of you adults want to join that challenge, that might be a good thing to do as well. Lastly, uh, Sarah's offering a story time with Sarah on Monday and Wednesday afternoon. She's live streaming herself reading some of the children's books just in time to give your kiddos something new to do. We're also offering a Friday night Bible study at 8 p.m. through video, the video conferencing app called Zoom. Uh, if you want an invite to that Bible study, please email me and I'll help get you set up. Of course, each week we're offering a worship service for that weekend for you. Sunday we had a piece of hardware fail on us, so the live stream didn't work exactly like we wanted to. We did get a, a message and some prayer time out for you, but we're ready to go for this weekend. Tune in anytime once you see the video on the YouTube channel. Lastly, I just want to remind you that our church is not closed. Our building may be closed, but the church is the people. Our people are never closed. So I hope you will do what I'm doing and take some time out each day to reach out to other members of the church. Send them a text or an email or better yet, a phone call just to check in on them. We are a community. And we are strong when we care for one another. All right, friends, that's it for this week. Take care of yourselves, stay home, and be safe. And as always, wash your hands and say your prayers, because Jesus and germs are everywhere. Peace. See you later.